it's the cross that enables us to live what Peter is going to exhort us, what he's, what he's been exhorting us to live in. You see, it's at the cross where um, Jesus gained our victory of being able to die to self. We've been crucified with Christ. Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. But the life I live in the flesh, or the life I live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And in context where Peter is talking about us being submissive and not being rebellious, it, it requires that, that crucifying of the flesh. My flesh, if it's like yours, and I think you can relate to that, my flesh always wants to rail against authority. My flesh always wants to rail against um, uh, of, of submitting myself to others leading. And, you know, I think about it in our nation. We are an independent people, and uh, we were born in independence. And it's kind of in the fiber of us as Americans to, um, to, to want to live our own way. And, uh, but if we did not have governance, if we didn't have rules, whether uh, just basic civil government, basic civil rules, there would be chaos and so Peter is taking that concept, and now he's bringing it from the broader picture. He first talks about, in chapter 2, of being submissive to those that are, that are in places of authority and governance. Then he talks to the slave and the master. Our application today may be uh, the boss and the employee, and so that we're to be submissive to rulership. Now he brings it uh, down to the home. Somebody said once that the light that shines brightest shines brightest at home. And any basis to any culture or society is the family. It's the home. And, and that's why it's so important to be praying in these days because the world, there are forces that are wanting to destroy the nuclear family. There are laws that are being examined right now and uh, being put through Congress and Senate that that would take away, strip away that family structure. Our response as the church uh, needs to be that we do everything that we can to build the family because it is the fiber of any culture and society. The whole um, tension about, uh, the, if you've heard of the, the bill that's just passed, uh, the house of the equal, certainly not equal rights. It's it's a it's a debasing of typical family roles uh, based around gender, and if 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 that passes and we have these laws enacted in our land, we are in deep trouble. But but uh, we are the body of Christ, and it, it's our responsibility. It's our role. Uh, to encourage those and influence our culture by living out God's plan and order for the family. So Peter, in that context of authority, now goes to the home. And he says this, he said, likewise, in other words, just like we submit in, in, uh, to government authorities and to our employers, likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands. So that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. This is very similar to what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit to your husband. After he says, submit one to another. And so here he's given an order and a precedence that, that if there's not this order in the home or the family, there'll be chaos. There's no indication here at all that the reason that God gives this is because women are inferior to men. That's just not the case. But there has to be a role of leadership. I look at leadership biblically more as that of being responsibility, and it's not a lording over. As a matter of fact, Jesus in one of the Gospels said that, that we're to be shepherds or leaders, not as the Gentiles rule over their subjects. But it's the idea of being a servant leader, that we, that we lead through servitude of serving. 
And so to me, I see it as a greater responsibility as a husband that that my leading in my home has to be in a servant role, not in a subjugated role over my wife. Now, some get that backwards and it's messed up. Uh, but God has called us first and foremost, husbands, uh, to serve our wives. Uh, Paul gives that example of Jesus, how that he demonstrated his leadership by serving us, by laying down his very life for us. I love what Sandy says that um, it's not very hard to be uh, to be um, submissive to a husband who's loving you like Christ loves the church, and uh, she's not saying that I love her to that degree, but but that is my that's my ambition, that's my desire, that's my intention to serve my wife, and uh, when it happens that way, it's a beautiful thing. So he writes to the wives. Um, that that even though you may be living, you may be in a marriage relationship where you, wife, know Christ, but your husband doesn't, he says, all the more be submissive so that you might win them over by your behavior. Um, an overbearing individual, I don't think, has ever been successful in leading someone to Christ. Maybe they have. Uh, but I think the greater uh, role that, that God's Word calls us to is that when we love, when we're, uh, and this is in every application, where as believers, where we're, where we're obedient and submissive to those roles of authority, it causes that person in authority to, to gain, uh, to, to give attention to the way that we live. And it is a witness. So here's what he calls wives too. And I'm not saying that's an easy role. I'm just saying that's what that's what Christ calls us to. Verse 2, when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Verse 3, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be hidden, be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which in God's sight is very precious. Now, he's not here laying a, a, um, a command that women are forbidden uh, to do their hair, to wear jewelry, uh, to wear makeup. As a matter of fact, uh, th there's nothing wrong with that at all. Some misinterpret this and, and put a command that women cannot do this, but that's not what Peter's saying. He's saying in contrast that the thing that is most beautiful is your inner spirit, that which comes from the heart. That's which is exhibited by the heart. Um, the, the, the real beauty um, is what emulates from the heart. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with, with the adornment of outward. I, I love it when my, when my wife gets all gussied up as we say in the South. Um, and I look at her and I go, wow. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that at all. But if that were the only beauty that my wife exhibited and in, in her there was a rebellious, um, nasty kind of self-centered spirit, that's not attractive at all. Um, so he, he's saying wives, Place a greater emphasis on your inner beauty rather than your outer beauty. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves. By submitting to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. So again, the encouragement there is from an inner beauty, not an outer beauty. Um, verse 7. He says, likewise, now here we're still in this, the likewise refers to this authority and submission thing. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. An understanding way. A way that, uh, in some translations, um, uh, gives, gives the idea of recognizing they are and, and loving them and caring them doting over them in an encouraging way, uh, understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Here I think P 
Peter is specifically speaking to the, the way that, that we are made up, our biological um, makeup. There's no refuting uh, at, at all that, that, that men are more, um, Callie, I don't, I, that, 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 that we're just stronger. We're built that way. Not that there aren't some women that are stronger, but but that's just the way we're built. And so we recognize that. The world's trying to tell us that there's no difference, but there is a difference in God's design, and God has designed it that way. There's nothing wrong with that. God has created us in that way, in those roles. And so he says, honor the woman as a weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, that last statement is probably one of the most important in the whole passage, that when we live in this kind of harmony in husband and wife relationships, where the wife is, is yielding, being submissive to the husband and his role in leadership, the husband is loving the wife like Christ loved the church, and there's harmony there, there will also be spiritual harmony with God. It's that vertical, horizontal axis that we talk about in relationship. And where if, 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 if husbands and wives are always jockeying for position, if the husband is, is beating down the wife rather than serving the wife, there's going to be disharmony in the marriage. And the thing that it will hinder, it will hinder our fellowship with God. It will hinder our prayers with God. And so he calls us to live in this kind of harmony, and we can't be fooled. If there's not harmony at home, there's not going to be harmony in our fellowship with God. I jokingly say that when Sandy and I were first married the first couple of years, a few years, it would drive me crazy when she gave me the silent treatment. You know what I'm talking about, guys? The silent treatment, what's wrong? Mm, nothing. Well, you know there's something wrong. And she's silent. And then I jokingly say that after 37 or 38 years, I lose track. I know she's not going to leave me in a couple of days of silence. is isn't so bad after all. I jokingly say that. But it still drives me crazy when she's silent. I, I want her, I want to have harmony and fellowship with my wife. And so it calls both of us to have to be submissive in that relationship and to carry out what God has commanded us in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Well, I love you. I pray God's blessings on you. I pray that this has been an encouragement to you. I want to encourage you to share uh, this Facebook feed as, as we're going right now to spread uh, this, and maybe somebody will be helped by it today. Let's pray and ask God today that he give us an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. We would have opportunity to cultivate a seed that's been planted and by his grace, if he would allow us to participate with him, watching him save somebody today, that God would do that. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.